good morning and good night. Thanks again for downloading the Body Snatchers podcast. And when you listen, stream, or download straight to your device, CastBox is your best option. Remember, if you like what you hear today, don't forget to subscribe and comment. So let's get started with Steve, Tino, Gia, and John with the news. Enjoy the show. All right, guys. Good morning and good night. Tino here from the Body Snatchers podcast, hanging out with Gia. Today, we're going to be talking about Incredibles 2. We've waited 14 years for this movie to come out. We're going to try to be kind and not dive into spoilers too heavily today because we don't want to ruin it for everybody. We want you to enjoy it, but we also want to talk about it because it was dope as hell. Gia, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Sleepy. I went and saw that movie like three days ago, and then I haven't I haven't slept since because it was so good. That's how much excitement I'm feeling. Oh, oh you just not sleeping from excitement of this movie? Mm-hmm, pretty much. If I die, it's going to be because of that movie. Oh, God. That's terrible, actually. You should <laughs> probably get some sleep so that you get, your brain can, like, formulate opinions a lot better about it. Nah, this is how I want to go. Just... <laughs> it's a warrior's death. So, uh, this movie, the way it starts off, I was so happy that it, like, picked up exactly where the old one left off like the way they tied it in it was like you it was like a continued scene at the end of the first movie and they just picked it right up like off you know off jump yeah i was actually very happy about that too i was expecting something like that or that maybe they would just recap what happened uh you know with that end of the first movie fight but i was like super excited that they just like went with it instead of being a recap you just saw it exactly oh yeah and we can talk about the first movie because like i said it's been out 14 years so i don't feel bad about anybody although it is weird to think like i was not that young but also not that old like when it came out i was like 14 years Ugh, like yeah i was 16 when the first one came out and i know one of my friends i was talking about it because while i'm watching this movie i'm in the theater and we're sitting and we're watching and the previews go a little bit long and they weren't even bad previews like i got to see the how to train your dragon preview on a big old screen i got to see yeah. a bunch of other previews i was like i started tearing up because how to train your dragons was part of my childhood too it came out like the first year that i joined the army or maybe the year before but like i love this series and like i'm just i'm just soaking it in and then this kid has the nerve to yell finally and I couldn't even stop the word vomit. I was like, what you mean, finally? Try 14 years. And then, like, somebody in the back of the theater was like, ooh. It was great. It's freaking great. Dude, you think that's great? I went to the movies with my for Father's Day weekend with my dad and my two little nephews who were, like, two and six. And they're fine. My dad, however, hasn't been to the movies in about 15 years, maybe more, believe it or not. So, you know, my whole thing was like, oh, dad, you're going to love it, man. They're really different. Like, you know, the the chairs are, you know, big and reclinable now and they got uh, alcohol. It's going to be a good time. You enjoy yourself. This motherfucker, <laughs> he thinks, you know, he's having such a good time with like me and the boys. We're all together. You know, the guys hanging out. He busts out his camera mid movie and starts taking pictures with the flash on. It didn't give a fuck about anybody. I was like, dad, you can't you can't, you can't just do that. <laughs> he's like, no, no, that's fine. Everybody's looking at us. And uh, and then his phone, like maybe like 30, 40 minutes later, starts ringing because he doesn't put it on silent. Keep in mind, he has his brightness up the whole time. So he's just been, like <laughs> scrolling through nothing and everybody's staring. Did he not see that like preview like part yeah. where it's like, turn your fucking volume down, turn your brightness down. Don't be on your cell phone. Thing I'm savage. My father is such an asshole. Did not give a shit about nothing. And then he picks up his uh, his phone and answers it in the middle of a theater. And he's like, hello. Yeah, I can talk. Yeah, I can talk. Like, just keeps getting louder and louder because, like, I guess they were having trouble and everybody's staring. And I'm like, I'm like whispers screaming at him, like, Dad, stop, stop. It's okay. I had that with Bran, except he didn't know that he couldn't do it. And he kept like kicking the chair in front of him. And I was just like feeling so bad for the person in front of him. And then, like, anytime he talked about something super exciting, he was just super loud. And I'm like, Bran, you have to whisper. And then he would get mad at me and be louder because I'm telling him he has to whisper. And I'm just like, bro. So you can you can tell your dad that he's like a five year old. Exactly. That's what it is. And, you know, that's just how people are. I swear to God, like when you're young, you're, you know, this adolescent piece of shit. And then you got to be an adult for so long. And then once you get to a certain age, I think like people just <laughs> don't give a fuck anymore. Like, you know what? Like you earned it. Like, go ahead and be the way that, you know, you were intended to be. Be bratty and spoil and spoiled. Have your fun or whatever. I couldn't even get mad at him. Like, I'm pissed. But I'm like, hey, man, like, don't do that more than the kids totally hilarious so anyways that's that little rant now getting back into the movie <laughs> uh as far as the major plot goes i i'm not gonna ruin it 
but I do need to touch base on this as much as I possibly can. I was a little upset with it. Like the movie's put together really, really, really well. It's almost two hours long, you know, front to back excitement. Uh, I'm gonna have to talk about Miss Incredible in a second. Don't worry, I will. But the plot to me, what after I had to step back and think about it was eerily similar to many main feats of the original plot. And that kind of irked me a little bit well (laughs) just a nitpick i would i would have to disagree well okay so in the overall aspect of one parent going off and doing something then yeah i can agree with that but in the on the flip side it's one parent knowingly going off to do something and not doing it secretively so i liked that a lot i actually didn't really have a problem with the story at all i was very happy with how they took it but um one thing that i will say uh since it's early on and if you go to see this movie and you have not seen it yet if you have epilepsy please be careful or you might not want to see it in theaters you might want to wait until it comes out on dvd or blu-ray and then watch it at home in a well-lit room because uh, there's a lot of scenes with flashing strobe type effects that uh could set that off Or, you know, if you go with family or friends, just, like, make sure you're with someone just in case that does happen so you don't, like, get hurt. You mean because of Miss Incredible's thick ass? No, not because of her thick ass. No, it was glittery. Speaking of, did you see that? It was glittery. Did you see that meme, though? It was like, uh, why is Miss Incredible out here looking at, like, an IG model and someone's like, nah, let's get this straight. Miss Incredible been thick since 2004. (laughs) I was just laughing. Did I see it? I'm the one who posted it. You're Did welcome. you? I didn't see your ass posted. I saw it in a different nerd group. I haven't really been on Facebook that much. you lying ass. I seen you like it. Did I? I don't yeah. know. I don't <laughs> think. I believe you. Yeah. I you shared it. look at in, your uh, damn page. In our, not my page. The Body Snatchers group is where I share Oh, I don't know. I know I saw it in my Drink Row nerd group. Yeah, my page is PG as hell, but my other nerd stuff was pretty <laughs> hardcore. But Miss Incredible, oh my God. You know, it got so bad that it got to the point to where I started writing down every time her ass was worth looking at and then i threw out the list when i got to number 20 because i was like it's always good looking at isn't that isn't that sad it was it was pretty sad but i that that was for me honestly like probably like the top three best parts about the movie they knew how thick she was and they just kept zooming it in i think they made her thicker and it was fan service this time around no no no. it was the same but it just looked like she was bigger because instead of it being red it was black and black makes like curves stand out more man (sighs) <sighs> that was the best part about the movie no it wasn't jack jack was jack jack was hands down the best part of this whole movie because like from the beginning i've always been saying he's a jack of all trades and he basically is with his powers and just every scene with him was like hilarious or like just entertaining there were several scenes with like other characters that it wasn't like quite as entertaining and then like the second that it was back to jack jack is great like when he's walking around with edna that was adorable. But Jack Jack was the second best part of this movie. Nah. Let's get that straight. Well, obviously, because you like ass, and I'm not, you know, about that life. First off, <laughs> like is an understatement, and you know it. I, I think every single podcast, if it's if there's been a booty worth mentioning, I mention it, and this is worth it. This is cream of the crop <laughs> right here. Okay? But anyways, uh, the confrontation that jack jack has like his main confrontation in this had me in in tears fucking tears it was so so much funnier than i thought it was going to be and and creative and just fun and cool and just just wait like i want to tell you guys like so bad but like i was dying because not only was it great but just the way that it tied in he was watching something specific and the thing that he starts is because this You can't. You can't. I can't. I can't. (laughs) It's too much. You'll give it away. It just, it it has to do with something he's watching and it just makes it even better. And then like it gets even better because, you know, that's when Papa learns that he's got powers. Because, you know, apparently they didn't see him up in the sky changing and doing stuff. But it's just, it's great. It's freaking amazing. That monkey see, monkey do. But yeah, he, he takes it to new heights. And then it's like every time I thought the scene was over, they took it a little bit further. I was like, okay, <laughs> okay. <clears throat> and the only other scene with Jack-Jack that compared to that, in my opinion, was uh, what they did with Edna. That was, uh, I didn't see that coming. That was very creative and very, very funny. Freaking adorable. Right, wasn't it? Like, they just, they... <sighs> what did I do right now? <laughs> they became super best friends, man. 
like just so so quickly and just <laughs> like, the wording that she had for it and the nickname that she came up um for herself or whatever have you like even the kids were like what the hell what they're like yeah that's how it's going down though frozone's wife still hilarious still as obnoxious as she was the first time around i mean he's obnoxious too though so it works i mean i don't know i see him and i see part of myself because he's just a man doing what he needs to do or i mean okay we we gonna compare you to frozone right now tino i mean we could i mean i'm no samuel l jackson but frozone <laughs> so i'm just gonna be 100 percent honest i completely forgot that he voiced frozone so in the beginning of the movie they have like an intro where it's like everybody that voice acts the main characters like kind of talk to you about it and they tell you that like it's it's worth the wait and when he showed up on the screen i was like who the fuck does samuel jackson play like i was really scraping my brain because like I even watched it the night before with, with Brand so that he could have a refresher on this dang movie. And then I just sat there and I was like, oh shit, it's Frozone. Okay. And then, of course, uh, one of the main things that I kind of noticed was different. So one, first of all, Dash's voice, it's a different voice actor because the obviously the kid who voiced him 14 years ago is now like a deep voiced man. Like you can't, can't pretend that anymore. And especially since they, they picked up right where they left off. And then Mr. Incredible, you can tell that his voice actor got old because <laughs> it's been 14 years because um, he definitely sounded older. And it was just enough to where you could be like, all right, yeah, it's definitely been 14 years. Yeah, it didn't. It, I honestly didn't even notice. I mean, I can when, see it. when you li- when you watch again, now that you know this, you're going to listen for it and you're going to be like, holy shit. Yeah, because I, I having just watched the first movie, it was really easy for me to pick that that change of voice out. And then, like, Violet's voice actor didn't have as much of a lisp as she had in the first movie. So Thank God, just, yeah. She sounded like a jackass in the first she movie. She sounded like a kid with a lisp. Jackass. Bro. Oh, okay. You I hear mean, that? If you got a lisp, you're a jackass. Well, hey, you know what? I don't make the rules, okay? How's it make him a jackass? Just because, you know what? Not because even going there. <laughs> you can't have a lisp and expect to be a member of the elite Space Force someday. It's just I'm not. Shut, sh- shut the fuck up. Space Force. <laughs> Every time I say Space Force, I'm going to hold up the Zoltan symbol from uh, Dude, Where's My Car? Uh, I'm just going to ignore it. Okay. All right. Space Force. I'm just going to ignore it. It sounds like something from a uh, regular show. Like, I just expect when people say Space Force to scream it really enthusiastically and like rock and roll music comes on just And then they don't. Enough. And then you're immediately sad. Well, if it's in my head, I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. So that's fine. Anybody who's picking up uh, on the context of what I'm saying, that was not related to the movie. That would be, yeah, you know, it just. Yeah, no, it's not related to the movie at all. If you're not but, getting it, Google it. Yeah, back to the back to the movie. Um, I was able to guess who the bad guy was like pretty early on, like before the plot twist. It was a dead um, giveaway. Yeah, but if you're not really looking for it, like. You mean like little kids wouldn't? Yeah, they'd just be like, oh my gosh, what? And then, of course, there was like certain scenes. I know um, when I was watching the first one, there's a scene where like an explosion happens where like they're flying over the ocean to the island and the kids and the mom get, you know, blown up. Mm-hmm. And Bran just literally, like, I could see his eyes tearing up. So when like really sad stuff happened in like the second movie, I just like looked right at his face, like, I'm gonna catch them tears, little boy. I'm gonna make fun of you forever. Remember that time you cried during Incredibles 2? Petty. When you were five, petty as hell. But here's okay, so check this out. I I rewatched The Incredibles um a week before this one came out because it had been I don't know I mean a couple of years since I watched the last one maybe like five or six and then probably before that wasn't you know probably all the way back to like oh four you know I don't watch it all the time but I've seen it a couple times and my memory was like totally refreshed on it and it's still a wonderful movie but goddamn this second one like. I mean, it's two hours, and I kind of had a little bit of an eye roll, like, oh, man, like, you know, it's probably going to stretch out more than I want it to be. No, like, from front to back, it's really, really well. Like, I was impressed the way the story is put together. I may have not been super happy with the plot, because, again, it was similar to the first one, so that irked me a little. However, it was good. It was really, really entertaining all the way through. DC should take notes on things like that. Do you think... Yeah, DC should for their live action movies, or if they if DC would just like do their live action like they do their you know cartoon, I think they'd be better too. But I mean, everything except Harley versus Batman, that's the worst, or Harley and Batman or whatever, worst movie ever. But outside of that, yeah, if they just did what you said, they would be a hundred percent fine. They'd probably destroy Marvel. Yeah, but not today. 
not today. So uh, what do you think about the other supers? Because there are other super char characters that are entered in here. And I don't want to, again, say what their powers are or what they do. But they do introduce more supers in this movie, which made it more fun. Because the last one, the only supers we got were the uh, like the flashbacks. And then that was kind of it. They didn't give us anybody else outside of the family, Frozone. And I think that was it. Yeah. I like how they went back and they kind of talked about some of the older supers before everybody had to go underground. And then with the, I wouldn't even say they're new supers, but like the newly like brought out supers, because obviously they're, none of them are kids. So they've had their powers for a long time. Some just as long as, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Incredible. So they were around when supers were forced under. I, I liked some of their power sets. I mean, overall, they all had something to offer, but I really feel like, they only really focused on one of the new supers and like giving that individual like more of a, a plot to the plot, if that makes sense at all. Um, and I, I was kind not. of a little bit disappointed because I, it does. It, it, she had more of a, a point within the plot. Shut up. <laughs> Space Force. Stupid. But um, I feel like some of the other ones that they should have expounded upon their characters a little bit better, like just had them talk more or interact more within the story versus just that one person. Cause I, I have a feeling if they do make a third movie, which they probably won't, I don't know. But if they do, I feel like that, that one person's probably going to be like spotlighted with the kids probably, or something of that nature. Eh, they, they may, I could see them doing it. It'll uh, be done tastefully. I'm sure. In fact, I think, I don't know why they like, put so much emphasis on like, we're sorry. It took us so long to make a second one. I really think they had absolutely no intention of making a second one. No, I think, I think they had intention of making a second one. I think that they just didn't want to rush it and have it be terrible because that's what happens a lot of the times with sequels. It gets rushed. They put it out like the next year or even two years later. And then now it's like a piece of it's a it's a dumpster fire. I was I was about to say a piece of flaming garbage, but it's just a full on dumpster fire. And then like everybody is super upset that it's just so terrible. So I feel like they took their time in creating what they wanted to create, and they focused on other stories in between so that they didn't get burnout or a writer's block or anything of that nature. So it's been carefully crafted over the years. And do I think they could have put it out a little bit sooner? Yeah, I, I feel like they could have, but. They know what they're doing with their movies and with the sequels to things. I still don't think that they so. were going to come back and do it. Like, I think maybe it was on the drawing board and they were like, ah, other stuff. Maybe we'll come back to it. And like they eventually were just like, ah, fuck it. Let's do it. And I say that because, you know, you're right. A lot of movies do come out where they're rushed and they're shitty sequels and they're terrible. But then there's a lot of other ones where they rate like, you know, four, maybe five years, which to me is kind of a lot. But that's enough time for you know, a, a lot of energy to go into something and make it good. Like, look at How to Train a Dragon. That was about five, maybe six years for How to Train a Dragon 2. And and, and I thought it was on par, if not better than the first. I'm a huge fan of that movie. Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fan of How to Train a Dragon in general. Like, it's my favorite movie series. But there also wasn't, uh, the, the market was also not, you know, crushed with dragon movies at the time either. We've had literally nothing but superhero movies coming out for the last, like, 10 years so that also makes sense to me why they waited give it a little bit more time because who's who really like you have all these iron man captain america avengers movies coming out like, and i thought about that but even still just to be the fucking loser that i am i'm thinking like okay incredibles came out in 2004 superhero movies didn't pick up and go until iron man dropped in 2008 so that's already four years and it wasn't a huge thing yet it was like 2008 that was the time frame when DC had Batman, uh, the trilogy. I think they were like on their first or second film. So it like really wasn't a whole lot going on. Iron Man had the same uh, kind of like uh, attention that I would say Hulk had or something at the time with like Edward Norton. We didn't know it was going to turn into a giant, you know, multi-billion dollar franchise yet. I think we could have guessed because at this point that was after Disney had purchased marvel so we we had a kind of inkling that it wasn't going to be terrible well yeah but, but nobody and, knew that they were going to make and when off. you look at it from that aspect too like it's all different creative writing teams focusing on things but they're putting a lot of effort into iron man and then all the rest of the stuff so other things get put on back burners i don't know it just it made sense well that's what i'm saying though. when i looked at the wider like 
wider, the bigger picture. What I'm saying is, is it's not that superhero movies were causing a damper where they didn't want to come out because it was oversaturated. Mm. I'm because we hadn't gotten there yet. I'm saying because Disney was involved with Marvel's purchase and they were starting to fixate on the other stuff. I think they had plans for Incredibles too, and then we're like, oh wait, we're making way more money off of this, and probably weren't going to come back mm. until like full circle. They realized, hey, you know what? This is a cash cow, and it really is. Like, if you look at the way it's doing just after this weekend alone, like it's probably going to blow out maybe any Pixar movie, honestly. Well, I I would agree, but then I would also disagree just because Finding Nemo didn't get a sequel for many a year also because they were focusing on other things. That's another one, though. Like, that, well, I think that's the same type of movie that wasn't intended to get another one. But because of, I, because of what you just said, Finding Nemo and Incredibles, I bet you they start taking, bringing back some of like those original movies that like we're supposed to be one and done and I, they're going to start pushing them back because the finding nemo 2 movie was done pretty good not as well as this but still pretty good yeah and it was 13 years between that and the original are one they gonna, but are then they gonna do the sequel to uh, also, up where he uh the old man is dead well i mean i could see that but i don't know why they the, the thing the difference between these and up is that they left it open-ended where there could be a sequel did you hear what i said or are you just ignoring it I did hear you, and I was trying not to be an asshole and acknowledge that you said Mr. Fredrickson's going to be dead. Because yeah. obviously, if they were to continue There's a it, meme. But then it wouldn't make any sense if you There's a gone. meme where it says the sequel. I don't care about the shitty memes, okay? Y'all been hurting my feelings with these damn memes of this damn group lately. <laughs> the, the, okay? The sequel to Up, and it's, it says down, and it's Randall and the dog look, looking no, down. Stop. <laughs> into the, look, stop right now. Into, I'm about to fucking hang this, into, <laughs> this podcast up. Looking into the casket with the old man. <laughs> I'm just gonna Man. fucking cut my mic so I can't talk about this I anymore. I said it, and I'm gonna find that <laughs> meme fucking and I'm asshole. gonna share it and tag you any minute. But please, continue. no, I could see your your I could see your rude ass posting it as the picture for the fucking podcast so that when I go to fucking watch it, all I see is that, and I would just like I would have to murder you. Wow. Okay, maybe they'll do another Big Hero Six where his brother comes back to life. Well, they've already been talking about that and working on it, so there's you that. You think his brother's going to come back, though? I think that they're probably going to make his brother like the villain, because they never showed a body when he died, quote-unquote. It's funny, because that's actually what I was going to follow up with on a serious note, is I think he will come back as a bad guy and be like, you left me to die, and now this big Hero 6 has got to die. <sighs> yeah, you mean this this Baymax that I gonna, uh, created has to yeah, die? Yeah, they're going to kill him, and then... Uh, in his death, the brothers are going to reunite and like find love for each other again. And then Hero's going to go ahead and, uh, you know, just recreate another body for Baymax like he did before. He could, but he won't because now the brothers have each other. Nah, you just made this like a gay brother porn and I don't like it. Why does it, it have to be gay? Because they're, you just don't want uh, Baymax to die. Look at the way that you said it. Now they're going to have each other and be blah, blah. Where's like that? It was just the way you phrased it. You made it really gay. Okay, well, gay means happy, and that's what they're going to experience. No, no, you made it the other kind of What's gay. What's the other kind of gay? There's only one type of happy you know, that I know. The, the homosexual kind of gay. That would be okay if it wasn't siblings. Uh, According to, you know what? I was going to make a part <laughs> joke about a trend that's going on on there, and I won't. It would have to be step-siblings, first of all. See, so you, and they're so not you know, I'm not the dirty one. You're the dirty one. You knew it. And I I'm not say, the dirty you one. You knew, though. I just know these things because I have lots of guy friends. Bullshit. They're... Who see me as a dude, and they tell me these things. Yeah, gay friends. No. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I do have some gay friends, but not a lot. Like happy friends or the other kind of happy? Not like the other, the other kind I of gay. I hate you for saying that. Next subject. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> Can't be can't be happy about nothing anymore. You don't remember uh fucking what was that? The Sharks and the Jets? The uh what the hell? West Side Story. Maria, mm. I feel pretty, oh so pretty, I feel pretty, witty, and gay. And that was a time. Yeah, but then do you remember that Robert De Niro in uh what was the movie? Stardust? He's he's like pretty much singing that. Yeah, I do remember. And he's actually gay. <sighs> happy. He was the <laughs> other kind of happy. No, no, no. They, that that song is like straight. So what up. about Happy Feet? What kind of happy was that? He didn't, they didn't call him Gay Feet, did they? Well, they might have been uh, being. But they were didn't. They being PC though, is it the other kind of happy? No, no. If that's the case, they wouldn't have said hell like or I'll be damned in Incredibles too. You think they'll let you? I'm just saying. In the space Force, if you're the other kind of happy. I think you could be, especially if it's a uh, as excitable as the person giving the speech about the Space Force. He is ecstatic about the Space Force. 
be super ecstatic. It would be the best thing ever. Greatest force in the world. As long as we start working on Gundams, I'm fine with it. God, it's not going to happen. You don't know, dude. 2036 might be the year. If anybody makes a Gundam first, it's going to be Japan. It's not going to be and us. And I think our fucking savior, President Trump, recognizes that. So what he's doing right now is making sure that we're on the up and up for getting Gundams made so that Japan doesn't fucking have a bunch of uh, mobile doll suits running around beating us in everything, right? I'm hanging up on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fucking funny. All right, well. The, the title of this show, Incredibles 2 and Space Force and Gay Stuff. We hope you love it. And happy stuff. <laughs> I don't even remember how we got to that. I'm going to be editing this later. Because you were being really brotherly loving over here and it was awkward it's not awkward nobody said anything about uh Mowgli and the way that he was dancing with blue that was camaraderie just like the brothers are gonna have camaraderie that's that's all it is see if you would have said that they're gonna have each other and have camaraderie and have their brotherhood again then that would have been okay but the way you phrased it was just not appropriate I said they were gonna have each other not like sexually <laughs> it's a, it's okay go back and go back and re-listen to that little that little clip and uh i'm sure well when you're editing you'll be able to hear it yeah and you'll you'll hear where i was coming from Well, when i'm editing it i'll make sure to like light a candle and pour hot candle wax like on my tummy while i'm listening because it's still <laughs> please don't you just see now you just made it even more where i'm hanging by i know what i did all right guys tune in next week <laughs> <laughs> jesus